Hey, everybody. Randy Patterson here with Boomerosity. As you already know, I love turning you on to bands that I think you might not have heard of. And today is no exception. The band is called Otis. And the lead singer and one of the two guitar players is a gentleman by the name of Boom Froggett. The band comes out of out of Kentucky, and you might say they're a southern rock band, but you know they're a lot more than that. They're blues, they're classic rock, even though they're young guys. And boy, do I ever love a band like that that can make a classic sound recently. In other words, new music that sounds classic. And these guys have got it, man. You've got to hear this band. I got introduced to them very recently. And I had the opportunity to interview Boone. We talked about this new album or new song, actually, called Last Fool in the Line. And it's the first of some other upcoming songs that will be happening that will ultimately culminate into an album. Um, the band has other music out that you can go listen to. And... Um, and I encourage you to do that because these guys are phenomenal. I would just, you know, for lack of a better way of putting the, them into a category, I would say Southern rock, classic rock, blues, all of it combined. This interview's fun. Boone's a great guy. He, I just happened to catch him while he was in between stops of the tour having a little break and he took the time to chat with me on his time off, which I always appreciate and never take for granted. So please listen to the interview. Please like it. Please subscribe to the channel. If you don't mind and share it with your friends and ask them to do the same thing. None of that will cost you a dime, but it helps us out tremendously. So here is the first of what I hope are many more interviews to come with Boone Froggett of the band Otis. Until next time, this is Randy Patterson with Boomerosity. Take care. Hey, man. Hey, Boone. How you doing? Good, good. Uh, background looks good, man. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're just biased. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might like it. So, <laughs> where are you dialing in from? From home, man. We don't we don't leave out till Friday morning. So, uh, got a got 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 a couple of days here at the house. Well, good. Yeah, home being where in Kentucky? I'm guessing. Uh, Glasgow, Kentucky, uh, not too far from you. We're right, uh, we're right above Bowling Green. Oh, okay. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm in the Smoky Mountains. I, I'm not in Nashville. Oh, okay. I'm in the Smoky Mountains. I'm, uh, I'm actually a couple miles up the road from Dollywood. So that's, okay. that's where I'm at. So um, good deal. Well, hey, first of all, I want to tell you thanks for, for dialing in, taking the time on your time off. I know it's... Uh, you you want to savor those moments when you can, so I appreciate the time you're taking away from that to chat with me, and I'm glad John put us together to to chat because I love your sound, man. I absolutely love it. I wish I discovered you sooner. And um, anyway, I'm glad to be talking to you. It's um it's a pleasure. Oh, thanks, man. Glad to be here. And man, uh, John John's a great guy. He's always connecting us with with people who who get it. You know, so yeah. Well, yeah. he he's uh, he's helped me out a lot over the years. I gosh, Boomerosity's in its sixteenth year now, and I think I've been working with him for almost all of those. It's uh, oh, wow. been probably for about twelve or thirteen years of that. So, uh, great guy knows a lot of people. Man, he's he's <laughs> yep. connected. I, 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 he he makes it fun for me. So. So for viewers that will eventually be watching this or listening to us on the podcast, um, tell people about Otis and yourself, the band Otis and yourself, and uh, so we can be a little familiar with you. Cool. I'm, I'm Boone Frog, uh, kind of a front guy of a band, a uh, guitar player. I got I got 50% of the guitar duties anyway, and uh, we're uh, in a band called Otis, and we're based out of Glasgow, Kentucky, but we're known all over the world. We've been to Europe twice, toured all over the States, and uh, we're kind of kind of a mix of uh, Southern soul, Southern rock, mixed with uh, our love for improvisational classic rock, and we kind of took all those elements and, and, and made something new, so it's not like 
it's not like seeing a legacy actor. It's not like seeing a tribute band. It's a, it's, it's a new rock and roll experience. And, uh, we've been so fortunate to, to be able to play with so many of our heroes, uh, here lately. We've, we've been, we've been running around with, uh, Jackal a little bit, uh, the Kentucky headhunters, uh, Wayne Baker Brooks. So it's nice to bounce back and forth between, you know, the, the more rock oriented shows and the more blues oriented shows. Cause we, we get to showcase, uh, different sides of the band and, uh, just released a new single, mm-hmm. Blast Full in the Line, and uh, being received very well so far. We've been added to two playlists by Joe Bonamassa. We're on uh, uh, Cutting Edge Rock and Cutting Edge Blues, and uh, we were also featured in Classic Rock Magazine's Tracks of the Week. So, so far, so good. Uh, this thing has just uh, just got over 20,000 streams on Spotify, and for an independent rock band, that's, that's pretty good. That's not, you know... That's not uh, that's not no big boy numbers, but for for independent act, that's that's not too bad. What is big boy numbers anymore? I mean, crap! Everybody can't. I mean, it seems like it's tough for you guys to make a living off of anything anymore, except touring yeah. and merchandise, and that's only if you're not in a three sixty deal with a label, right? So. <laughs> right it's just, it's like and recorded music anymore it's just a it's just a promotional item i hate to hate i hate to say it but that's just that's just kind of the way it is that the, the business is uh tickets and t-shirts and you gotta gotta stay on the road and uh, be active go out there and find your people and and hopefully uh and hopefully uh, scrape up a few dollars to take home yep well i uh i want to get back to the band in just a moment but one thing I, I love about the band is and you touched on it you're not a you're not a legacy act which i love all the legacy acts that's you you know boom rossi is all about that right so um but what i love about what you guys do you're obviously younger um not an old fart like me but there's you guys sound classic yet new and fresh and that's what i think is such a trick for a lot of up and comers that want to get there that it's hard for them to find that sweet spot and you guys nail it man that's that's uh that's well, awesome that's why i'm i'm glad i discovered you and again thank john for that but uh you guys you guys got what it takes what before we get into influences all that though what's behind the name otis uh greg martin the guitar player for the kentucky headhunters actually named the band there was a band called Otis in, the, in Louisville, Kentucky in the 1970s, and they had sort of a blues rock sound. And uh, the name always stuck with him, but the band never really made it past, you know, just playing the local club scene. So he he had always kind of been looking for a place to reuse that name and give it some new life. So when we come along, he's like, He's like, this, this would be perfect. Here's, you know, here's my idea. Uh, you guys can, you know, uh, take it for what it's worth. You can, you can you know, use it if you want to or, or, or not use it. We decided to use it. And it's, it's, it's been a great thing. It's also, it's also been uh, frustrating at times because uh, in our genre, there's a lot of Otis's. There's Otis Redding, uh, Otis Rush, uh, Otis Clay. But, you know, there's no, you know, band name Otis. And we do have, we do have the copyright, uh, the patent to use that in the United States, and we're the we're the only one that has it. So, uh, so yeah, it's 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 been a good thing, and I think uh, it, it it always looks cool on posters and a t shirt. Mm-hmm. It, it seems to stick with people. So uh, we're 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 Otis for good. <laughs> <laughs> good deal. Um, how long have you been playing guitar? Oh man, uh, since since I was. Since I was around 12 years old, my grandfather was a uh, old time fiddler, like on the you know state championship level here in Kentucky, and my dad was a like Bakersfield honky tonk style guitar player. So I, I I never had a chance. It was it was constantly constantly music. You were doomed, the, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's you know that's 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 one reason that, that has made our influences so interesting because I didn't I didn't hear any much rock and roll or blues until i was maybe 12 or 13 years old Mm -hmm. and uh, stumbled across uh my dad's cassette tape collection and found uh bb king and the famous Mm -hmm. thunderbirds and once i heard that it was over i was on i was on the guitar train then i i I just thought if i could make one note sound like bb king he said that i was (laughs) like that's all that's that's all that's all i want to do so so that that kind of go ahead i'm sorry I understand that that's just set me on on the path to uh, take guitar and and music more seriously and not just a 
not just a weekend, you know, a uh, family thing that it had been. Well, I, I read in the, in the materials, John sent me that, uh, you, you had the, um, honor of, uh, being heard by Billy Gibbons and he handed your stuff off to like buddy guy who I just saw a couple weeks ago and, um, love his son, Greg, he and I become friends and, yeah. and then, uh, Jeff Beck, I mean, God almighty, <laughs> I mean, what kind of, <laughs> what, I mean, can, can it get any better than that? You know? No, I mean, we, we, we can pretty much, uh, we can all die happy now that, <laughs> that Billy Gibbons is just, he's out there burning our music on, uh, on blank CDs and giving it out to people. And that's just, man, that's one of the greatest compliments. Of course, we all, uh, obviously very influenced by, by Billy F. Gibbons and NZZ Top grew up on all those classic records, you know, uh, man, I could, I could, I could go on for a long time about, about ZZ Top and Billy, but Billy's been so good to us. He, he first, um, it was kind of a chance meeting, uh, Greg, uh, from the Headhunters and I were down in Nashville, uh, attending the funeral of Brian Farmer, who was the, uh, guitar tech for government, the only Allmer Brothers band. Right. And we were headed, headed back home and, uh, Greg gets a call from Billy and he's like, Hey man. Uh, I'm in town for a couple of days between shows. If you're, if you're around, let me know. So we just, we just turned, turned the van right around and uh, <laughs> went back down to Nashville. You know, when, when, when Billy calls you, you, you got to, you got to act on it. So, up. That's right. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, we, we went down and had supper with uh, him and his wife Gilligan. And at the end of the night, uh, Greg just kind of slides him over our CD and was like, man, you might use this for a great coaster, but I think, I think you'll, I think you'll enjoy it. So he he's the put you know uh pushes his glasses down he's like well i like the artwork so i was like all right he'll he'll, he'll, he'll probably listen to it so uh within the next couple of days he gives greg a call back was like i love this band uh very authentic he said they they listen to the right stuff and uh he's like i love it he was actually asking about how we got some of the sounds on the album and what amps we were using and all that stuff and then after that his secretary uh sent us a press quote and they started mentioning us in some podcast interviews and uh uh he was even uh he was even playing our uh one of the songs from our first album as walkout music when he was doing billy f gibbons and the vfgs and i was like man that's so cool so uh but wow. billy's been great to us he's a he's one of the biggest advocates for blues out there and mm -hmm. uh just a just a great guy Favorite story I have of Billy. I've interviewed him, but only by email. And I knew it was really him because I know the publicist. But um, I, the first time I ever saw ZZ Top was only three years ago. It was right after Dusty died, of course. And it was wow. down in Chattanooga. And uh, I had my brother-in-law with me. And we're sitting there waiting for the show to start. And there's these two guys in front of us. And we started talking. And you could just tell they're giddy as all get out just to be there. and. I'm thinking, you know, these boys must not get out much or something. I don't know. But uh, he, they started turning around and talking, and he goes, yeah, you never believe how how we got here. I said, well, how's that? And he said, last night I'm in the bar, and I see this guy that looks like Billy Gibbons. I go up to him and said, are you Billy Gibbons? He said, yeah, I am. And he goes, man, my dad raised me on ZZ Top. And he started talking. And Billy said, are you guys going to the show tomorrow night? He goes, no, man, I couldn't get tickets. You know, a little out of my price range, all that. He goes, hold on. Picks up his phone calls, you know, mumbles some stuff, hangs up, turns around. <laughs> he goes, you got tickets waiting for you tomorrow night. And, I mean, these guys were on cloud nine. And I thought, you know, that is the coolest thing when when guys of that stature do acts of kindness like that. I just think that that makes me think the world of me. And, and that's just for a fan. I can imagine how you feel. You know, but um but my first time seeing him though was him in the band. Believe it or not, wasn't the show is at uh Stevie Ray Bond's funeral. <laughs> I was living in oh, Dallas wow. at the time and they showed up for the funeral, which I thought was really, really big of them. So man they're, they're... for you. What uh if you were to pick you know, desert island music, and you were saying, "Man, if I'm only going to listen to one artist, and it's a an influence of yours, who would it be?" Oh man, that's a tough one. I would, I would probably, I probably have to go, uh, probably have to go with Muddy Waters because I feel like 
everything I like kind of kind of flows from that river. So uh, as, as long as I as long as I had some had some good uh, chest there and muddy, I'd, I'd probably be all right. All right. Well, what's your performance at the Big House, the Almond Brothers Big House? And yeah, yeah. man, I love that performance. That well produced, great sounds. You guys aren't hot dogging it. You're just putting it out there straightforward. And I loved it. I was just kind of curious. Did you steal Ronnie Wood's Zamatis guitar there? Was that looked a lot like it? <laughs> it it is. It's 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 the same company. Um uh, they they've actually sent me three guitars so far and i'm on their i'm on their artist list and uh i always wanted to play those guitars because of you know because of ron wood and uh and uh there's there's been a lot of great guys that's that's, that's played those guitars over the years they started out in in england but now they're they're owned in um by a fella in in japan and that's where they're, they're that's where they're produced from they're they're great guitars it's a it's an aluminum top mm-hmm and uh, yeah, I, I, re- I really, really enjoy playing their guitars, especially and that uh, my metal front is tuned to open D and I, I play a lot of uh, slide guitar and, and that tuning on that guitar. And I think it kind of has a, has a unique sound because of that, uh, because of that metal front. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's interesting how little things like that change the dynamic, the tone, the feel, the whole nine yards. I'm not a musician. I, I'm sounding like I know yeah, what yeah. I'm talking about, but I've, interviewed enough of you guys to pick up on that and it's um it's pretty cool how greg martin you talked about him i i need to talk to him again it's been a couple years but i i saw him perform only one time and it was with phil kagi at the dallas international guitar show and um phil's one of those where he gets a piece of something he slides it into strings and comes up with phenomenal sounds and unique approach it have you are you familiar with phil oh he's brilliant man he should he should be a household name yeah. i finally got to see him play at the they uh he did a jeff beck tribute in nashville at third and lindsley and wow. uh jimmy hall was singing because you know he had sang and, and toured with jeff a lot and he invited uh myself and our drummer dale down he's like uh won't, won't you guys come come catch this show look there'll be a lot of cool people here and uh and I, you know, I told Jimmy, I was like, man, you know, it was just going to be really special for me to hear you sing those Jeff Beck songs because I've never got to experience that. Because usually when we run into Jimmy, it's either uh, maybe one of his solo shows or we've opened for Wet Willie before or we'll see him out and doing his band leader gig with Hank Jr. And that's a, that's a different experience, but I've never got to see him. I never got to see him play with Jeff. So it was, it was cool to hear him, to hear him sing, sing those songs. And, uh, Mandy, we, we looked out at the crowd and there's, there's Phil Keggy there. There's, uh, there's Beth Hart and, uh, uh setting out the crowd. And it was just, it was, it was, it was a pretty special night, man. Oh man, Beth Hart. I've, she's probably second or third most interviewed person I've done. I mean, as far as on Boom Rossi and, phenomenal oh my gosh she's she's one of my top faves tell me about last fool in the line man what's the what's the story on that and there's going to be a are there going to be a bunch more songs to make up an album coming out that's uh that, that's what we're heading towards now man uh everybody's kind of playing the singles game right now because it's just so hard to get anyone's attention to listen to a, a full-length release and uh but we're but that's that's our ultimate goal is to is to get a, a full-length uh, release out there so it's uh it's not not going to be in the immediate future but it is coming we've been we've been writing up a storm and coming up with some with some really cool stuff so i think i think everybody's going to dig it and uh, like i said we've had about as good a response to this song as we as as, as we could hope for uh musically I got inspired uh, to, with, with the riff for this song by a Marvelette song I was listening to called Danger and Heartbreak Dead Ahead. And it's got kind of this looping guitar thing, which I, I, I picked up on. And that's kind of what inspired me to do this song. But but lyrically, it's just about, you know, as a touring musician, you have access to some really interesting people. And they always have very interesting stories, and it's just like, man, we've we've got to figure out a way to to share some of this stuff because uh, not not everybody's in a <laughs> in a position to hear hear some crazy stories like that. And uh, and you, when people tell you stuff like that, you're like, hey, is this the truth, or, or are they bending it a little <laughs> bit? And at, at the end of the day, it's like, well, who who cares? It's a good story. So it's a good story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So and I, and and everybody that's listening to it has either said 
hey man that's me or you know i i know a guy like that so it's a uh, it, it's it's good to write a song that that resonates with people and uh and, and doesn't go over their head which is easy to do uh you know sometimes we we have uh complicated stuff is it comes more easy to us than than really uh pulling the arrangement back and and, and keeping it and keeping it simple so it was a uh, it, it was a little bit a little bit different type of song for us but people seem to really enjoy it uh, back to billy are you guys going to do any work with him we would love to i saw billy on the uh, rock legends cruise back in january got to visit with him a little bit and uh it's uh billy's in he's an interested person man he's uh if you're if you're in his orbit he'll he'll do anything for you uh, but, but yeah, he's just such a busy guy. So yeah, it, 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 uh, it might happen. It, it, it might not happen, but, uh, you know, we're, I know we're on his mind cause once in a while he'll, uh, he'll, uh, he'll send me a, a burnt CD of blue stuff. That's, uh, he'll take a Sharpie and pinstripe it for us and, uh, <laughs> and, and, t and turn us on to, to some stuff he thinks we should be listening to. So we would, we would, uh, we would love to do some work with Billy. Good deal. Well, what's on your radar for the rest of the year and going into next year? Oh man, we got all kinds of fun stuff touring wise that's, that's uh, getting ready to happen. Uh, we're going to be in uh, Knuckleheads and uh, which is a legendary venue in Kansas City. We're going to be there next week with Tommy's Rock Trip. Which uh, Tommy is a legendary drummer. He's played with Ozzy, Black Sabbath, Alice Cooper, uh, Ted Nugent, and he just kind of does a review of all the stuff that he's toured on and played on. So that's that's going to be a lot of fun. Got some got some more shows with the Headhunters coming up, and uh, at the end of September, we're going to be doing the Georgia Allman Brothers Band Association Festival, which is always a a, nice. a big honor to go yeah. do that. And uh, we're going to be there a day early. We're going to do a, a meet and greet at Fresh Produce Records there in Macon, and then we're going to they do like a showcase jam where they get kind of all the bands and they kind of mix up everybody and uh and, and play a, a show of all my brother stuff so it'll be fun to Good. get up there and jam on that and then on september 27th we do the uh the white night show at grant's lounge which if you're not familiar with grant's lounge it's it's the place where all the capricorn bands uh hung out kind of after hours so they had you know marshall tucker the almonds wet willie all those guys would be uh mixed up in there doing jam sessions so it's a it's a great place to play and uh oddly enough it's the it's where uh kirk west uh photographed us for our second album eyes of the sun we went up to the third level of uh of grants before it got renovated and, and he uh, he did a, a photo shoot with us so it's it's really cool that we got to got to get those photos there because it looks totally different now wow wow how fun gosh yeah well uh when you talk to greg he may not remember me but we had a blast talking with each other i'd love to talk with him again but well, you know just uh just about anything really i don't care if he has a new album out or not he's just fun to talk yeah, to yeah. and uh, it's been too long, but man, I, I, I love your sound. Like I said, I want to, uh, I'm going to watch your itinerary and, uh, if I see you yeah, within, uh, you know, easy distance of me, I, I take care of my elderly dad now. So it's not as, I can't get away as often as I'd like, but if you're nearby, I want to catch you guys and, uh, come up and shake your hand and chat a, a, a brief moment just, uh, so we can get to know each other and Boone, I, you know, uh, like I said, I love your sound. So anytime you have something new going on, um, have John get a hold of me or contact me direct and we'll get one of these set up and we'll get the word out. And I hope I can bring a few new fans to you, you know? So, uh, Hey man, that, that'd be great. If you, if you ever want to come to the show, man, just reach out and we'll, uh, we'll get you on the guest list and have a big old time. It sounds like fun, man. Well, stay safe. Enjoy your time off. And, uh, I'll see you down the road somewhere. That sounds good, man. All right, take care. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. This show was edited and produced by Mike McClellan. The original music, Roll the Dice, was written and produced by Quentin Hope. And Randy Patterson was your host and executive producer.